this bit of my my screen because I can't get find my tab. Can't see. Da, da, da. <laughs> now we're back in. Excellent. Hello, world. Welcome to myself, Max McGillivray from uh, Beanstalk. We are with a very important individual by the name of Nicole Pisani, from who's the co-founder co of Chefs and Schools. Nicole, say hello to everyone. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me here. No problem. And to, did, did, you, did you hear from the excellent, from the amazing Kath Kay as to how you and I got hooked up together to get this broadcast sorted out? Did you hear? Yes. I, yes. It's Henry Dimbleby. Yeah, well, it's, it's even more uh, interesting than that. So Henry Dimbleby, everyone in our sector knows of Henry because of um, everything he's doing in the respect of the national, national, food, food. national food strategy. So earlier this week, he was on uh, Times Radio. Times Radio. With, yeah, with uh, Marilla uh, Fostrop. I've been on uh, the radio with Marilla Fostrop, but as you were showing off earlier in our green room, you, you've been on all the TV cook shows, all the radio shows. But so Henry was on there with uh, Marilla, and um, um, they, they, I think they were actually on there to talk about the national food strategy, but they just ended up talking about you, Nicole. <laughs> and and um, um, Marilla walked through the, the story with Henry, of, which we'll come on to, of how uh, this amazing um organization of, of chefs and schools um came came about and i was walking my office dogs at the time listening in as i, as I do my most lunch times i thought well this is really inspirational so i i uh, reached out to mariella and said um, um this is an amazing uh, uh, scheme how how can we be sort get get involved and she said oh you need to talk to henry i, said, I don't want to talk to henry i want to speak to nicole how do we get on contact with nicole so we then got in contact with the the excellent uh, amazing kath k from indigo eight who very kindly got this all set up and, and here here we are so we didn't want to speak to henry dimbleby we wanted to speak to you so, so how so how are we going to kick this off can can we just well, let, let me just set it up a, a little bit, especially for those on, on the podcast. So we're live on Facebook, we're live on, on link, LinkedIn, but let's just give a bit of a, um, a, a bit of background so that everyone is fully aware of uh, Nicole and uh, Chefs and Schools. Your mantra is clear. What we do, we fuel the future by transforming school food and food education, training kitchen teams to serve great school lunches. Uh, the Chefs and Schools scheme is simply inspirational, as you're going to find out. While writing the school food plan for the UK government, Henry Dimbleby posted a tweet asking whether any chefs would be interested in taking over the kitchen at his children's state school in London. Nicole, then head chef at the acclaimed Soho restaurant, help me with the pronunciation, Nopi. Nopi, yeah. Nopi, uh, decided to take the gamble of a lifetime, applied and was offered the job by the school's then head, Louise Nichols. Today, you reach over 20,000 and counting kids um, every school day. Your work started in London, but is slowly expanding across the country. They're always looking for people who share their vision and passion about fueling the future well. We want to use the Beanstalk platforms to shout about chefs and schools and for us all to learn from the brilliant Nicole Pisani. So Nicole, just just talk, uh, talk us through this. So you, you've, um, you, you've got this um, amazing uh, chef background, and then you see this tweet from Henry, and then you just decide literally to take this, uh, this 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 jump into the unknown to get into the school school food sector. Why? Um, originally, it was purely out of selfishness. Um, I have a really good friend, uh, uh, Pierre, who handed me the tweet, and he was like, "Nicole, I think if you worked in a school, it's with children." But also, um, they would never call you on a Saturday or a Sunday to cook oh. breakfast. Ah. And I was like, that is exactly what I want out of a job, that I am never going to call, get called on my day off to work on a weekend. Yeah. But um, it started off selfishly because it was Monday to Friday. And I thought, you know, working with kids was actually something quite nice that I could, you know, teach or pay, pay forward the skills that I had learned. Um, but then from the first moment of actually going into a school kitchen, I realized that it's so rewarding to actually feel like you're making a difference. And if that is with the teams that you're training in the kitchens, or if it's with the kids who are eating, you know, food that is, you know, exciting and experimental, or if it's, you know, the whole school learning and getting to eat a really good school lunch. So um, now we employ we have about 60 chefs, 60. Um, head oh, yeah. chefs and sous chefs who have left the industry um, and started working in schools. And every morning, you know, these 20,000 kids get fresh bread every day. 
uh, you know, some oh. of the schools do things like, you know, black squid and buns fresh from scratch, you know. So it's it's amazing the quality of food that um, we're able to produce at volume as well. I mean, some yeah. kids, some of our schools are doing, you know, 1,000, 1,200 meals a day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, originally it, it was a tweet simply because I was wanting to have weekends off and then ended up being an amazing charity that, you know, I work with the, the charity itself. Um, we have so many amazing people that work with us and turn up every day. Um, as you know, we've just started our new campaign, which is uh, we give a sausage about school food. Excellent. And now yeah, we yeah. have this ongoing joke um, between us, like we all wake up and give a sausage. You know, it's all about believing so much in making yeah. a difference in what we do. Um, and 20, yeah, 20,000 kids get basically uh, great oh. food every day. And it feels like you're just scratching the surface. This interview that um, that Henry did with uh, Marella, the the beginning of the week, it, uh, it, he, it was just the surprise he had when you got in contact. Um, that <laughs> and, and it, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? I, I just always tell my kids this: just be curious. And so, so Henry is obviously of a of a curious nature as well. He, just so the thought that well, there might be someone take this the right way, mad enough to actually look at it because. Oh, we, we've seen so many people try and come into the, the, the school system and also the, the, the NHS system to um, create that create that revolution and, and, and bless them for, for trying. But perhaps they've um, looked at it the, the wrong way. And it's fascinating what you use. You, you obviously love doing what you do, but I, I can just imagine in a, in a full time role, it, the hours and the pressure is, um, is, is relentless. And perhaps it's, it's um, troubling you a little bit to actually enjoy it and to actually take that leap and a, a bit of a, a, a left field swerve and get involved with the with the school side um, and to be able to create your magic as, as you do and, and the 20 the, the 20,000 kids now. But Henry Henry intimate, intimated in the in the interview that the right from the get go, it wasn't the easiest of things. That, that you found that you had to change a little bit, didn't you? Because you, your your customers had suddenly changed overnight. What, was it an easy ride that first couple of weeks, that first couple of months? Or, I mean, it's there's yeah. We we still have a, a story that um, I decided I I just couldn't see the point of uh, having great um, selection of menu of the menu and then having a jacket potato. So second day in, I just took away the jacket potato and literally the kids just like slammed themselves on the floor and just cried and screamed. And I was, I was like, there's no way I could roast the jacket potato now in three minutes. But there's an ongoing joke, like hopefully we still have jacket potatoes because <laughs> I just it, it's funny that the lessons learned or the lesson learned. And now, you know, we make sure that the journey is not fast you know we take the children on a journey which is understanding actually you know and and then again like henry said it wasn't just changing the food it was actually educating them about food so we went into you know the first secondary school and we just took away all the food that was not good for them and they just you know they, they just wouldn't have it they were like you yeah. can't tell me what to eat so as soon as you start educating and you make food fun you get them excited, you know, we're growing mushrooms in the classrooms, getting them to forage, you know, in Hackney on the, on, on the estate, yeah. getting them to do all these things meant that they were getting excited about food and then understanding what we were trying to do. Yep. So yeah, Gayhurst, the first few years at Gayhurst, I mean, most of them, I would, like Henry said, I would stand at the bins and just see, you know, 600 pounds worth of amazing fish go into the bin, you know, and just, you know be mortified wow. because one it's the value of the produce two yeah. it's you know most schools whenever we have fish on friday they actually start prepping on wednesday because they get it fresh they get it yeah. whole you know they need to portion oh. they need to breadcrumb we do this amazing breadcrumb which is turmeric and oats and then they oh, start the crying you know what? so it's 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 a three-day job to see it all go into the bin is upsetting yeah. But, you know, it, it was part of the journey and it was part of what we learned okay. to make sure that when we now assist other schools, the journey is slow. We do yeah. all the education hand right. in hand with the changing of the menu. 
yeah. you know and the most important thing for us is just putting you know putting quality first um we don't compromise i mean you were talking about fresh fresh produce all our schools vegetables are all fresh everything is fresh yeah. everything is made on site yeah um obviously saying everything i always get asked do you make cheese on site but no we don't okay. um but yeah all the veg all the bread all the desserts um all the main meals the vegetarian meals uh, most schools have amazing you know the staff when you understand it the staff actually are super skilled you yeah. know it's just allowing them giving them the ingredients giving them the spices allowing them to use yeah. you know things like fresh broccoli or making their own curries the curries that they actually cook Fantastic. at home you realize yeah. they're actually amazing you know there's a workforce that is not being used simply because yeah. they're not allowed to cook so yes, we. So, hold on. so, so Nicole, Nicole, this is this is a, a, a amazing. It's, it's like a beacon of light within within this the, the school system. How how did we get into this this mess in in the in the first place? In the respect of just the this formulaic school dinner, because um, what was the expression? You you, you feed. Um, uh, how, how, oh, I forgot the expression. Uh, uh, you, you feed an army marches on its stomach, um, on on its food, and and, and likewise with uh, with kids. If we're not um, fueling kids properly, we're not going to get the, the best out of them. And also. Um, the, the another adage of, of give me um, a, a give me a child, but give me a boy before the age of seven, I shall give you a man. And li li likewise, you can copy that with the food. If we if they're eating properly from that early age, that's going to be uh, with them for the rest of their lives. But where we seem to got into this trap is just this beat 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 of the of the food service lorry reversing in with the twenty kilo bag of custard. And uh, the the box of fish, frozen fish fingers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as, um, going back to Henry um, and his interview, as he as he described it, um, all of these uber uber trained but, and, and, and potential chefs that um, everyone's got in the kitchens are just doling out stuff from a can and reheating it, and it's not doing any good for us. I just just wonder how we got into that position in the first place. Is that is that the British culture in comparison to other? Say other 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 Europeans and and is it reversible? Can can we get your model uh, flowing throughout the rest of the U UK? There's there's very little home economics that goes on in the UK, and we we think that's one of the biggest issues about getting people excited about getting into the fresh produce sector or the hospitality sector. Then where where do you think we went wrong in the UK with this with this um, this feeding mechanism within within the school system, please? Um, I don't know where we went wrong because I I went to school in Malta and um, I can tell you where the food in Malta went wrong. But um, I actually, you know, I can tell you how we can make it right and how we can okay. make it right is what we're doing every day. It's the education of food. It, it's not only I mean, one in three children leave primary school obese. We have a really big crisis. A friend of mine came, you know, to do a talk in a secondary school. And the first thing she said, you know, food is either poison or medicine. We make that choice every day. And we're either putting stuff in our body that's going to make us sick, you know, further down the line, or we're putting stuff in our body that's actually going to help us fight the things that, you know, colds, coughs, even stuff like telling kids, you know, I know it's a, it's a weird one, but eat a bit more of, eat, eat some more kale and you sleep better at night, you yeah. know, and this idea of linking food to the ailments, you know, the amount of allergies that we have at the moment, like, we go into schools and there's 40, oh. 50 children allergic to to to, yeah, to what is that all milk, about? To, yeah. to flour, to yeah. so I don't know where we went wrong, but I do think that thank you. There's so many people. Obviously, it's not only chefs and schools. There's so many other charities. You know, there's School Food Matters. There's the Felix Project. There's a the Soil yeah. Association. Yeah. You know, we're all saying the same thing: is that we need to make it right. We need to get kids to understand what they're eating, to question, to eat seasonally. Even yeah, just by yeah. eating seasonally, we're helping the system. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I, sometimes I go into schools and, you know, they're like, Nicole, the cheese omelette is out of stock. And I'm like, well, Adam, one of our chef trainers was posting this, you know, because, you know, it's, it's not even a tort to order eggs. <laughs> You know, the cheese yeah. omelette specifically is out of stock. And, you know, these kind of things like we can't find cust 
powdered custard. It's like, well, try and, you know, crack an egg. <laughs> You know this kind of thing where it's it's just we're we're yeah I, I don't know how we've got into you know okay. thinking well, that but but well well done thank you for majoring on the positives that's that's I, I could just tell that <laughs> that's you and an individual there's me trying to drag us down to to go back as to what all the doom and gloom that's happened over the last 20 30 years because again we need the lightning rod like you to 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 inspire us and, and the food sector um the, and as yeah the other throwaway quote i always use is that uh, six out of ten kids don't know uh, where fruit and veg uh, come from but again is that example that you you've given of your of your kids um actually foraging and hackney <laughs> that's brilliant they, they're gonna have such a good 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 understanding and then the, the whole issue uh, on um on an nhs basis that um uh the, the stats showing about the number of people that are potentially going to be um uh type 2 diabetes by a certain age group if we don't do something because we would just we would just be morphed to eat all the all the wrong things but if we have this education that as so i suppose the, the bit i get get confused is on is, is that you, you you and your team obviously did a, a great job but you're you you've you've all had to set this up yourself in some ways i just wish it was government driven that this is just a a, a norm it's a bit we, we did a broadcast recently with the world obesity um, federation and it was fascinating what they were saying that they're they're campaigning uh, for obesity to be recognized as a disease and if it could be recognized as a disease by the united nations and the um, fao um, that will give um the the world obesity federation more clout to actually do stuff but it's almost as if we seem to be frightened of it and if it feels a bit like um tobacco where am i going with the comparison with tobacco and food that's um, um they, they, they came in heavy um there was a lot of lobbying by the tobacco industry to stop it um, but look where we are now and i hardly know anyone that um smokes of any age group which is great because long term that's and and we need to do more with them um, with, with food we've got to find some ways to get kids and the whole age group to eat better otherwise we're going to have the ramifications that we did with the um, with tobacco step in henry with everything that he's doing with the, with the national food strategy and, and, that, and then we have inspiring people like like your like yourself what what does success look like for you nicole and your your colleagues it's brilliant that you've got twenty thousand kids and counting um under your under your regime um but where do you want to go where do you want to take this i mean it and I'll answer that question uh, in a minute because I just wanted to add like this is what we wanted to do now with this campaign is to start the conversation, because if you're not asking what are we, you know, if you're a parent and you're not asking, you know, what am, what is my kid getting fed at school, if you're a head teacher and not querying yeah. what am, what am I giving my kids while they are in my care at lunchtime. And if you're a teenager and you're not asking, like, do you think this is actually good for me, then we're never going to get anywhere. And this is this is the reason why, you know, the campaign that we give a sausage is just is just like, let's start the conversation. Let's question and then see how we can make it better. You know, we're not saying that there's millions of schools out there who are feeding their kids well but there's also schools who you know don't rate their teens they don't you know the i think the main problem is that the workforce has not been invested in there's so many teams that we go in to kitchens and they're not part of the school you know they wouldn't know their names they come in and out from a different uh, door and how, how can you have someone feel you know recognized or proud wow. of this job that's so influential when they're not given any, you know, acknowledgement for turning up every day, you know, you, they're, you are, they're the oh, heroes. No, stop, 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 Nicole. You, you're joking, aren't you? They're, they're, they're not seen as, as part of the same team. They're not seen as, as the umbrella of the school. They, they come in through a different, but, but surely there, there should be, it's like one community, one, one family, or the whole raison d'etre, whether you're the person peeling the potatoes to the head teacher, is all about educating that that kid that that kiddie wink to eat better to learn well to be fit and to to, to go off into to a bright future that's shocking and also to enjoy the food like food is pleasurable you know yeah. why have we forgotten that this hour that we have in the middle of the day yeah. is you know we say the dining hall is a classroom you know and it's an extension of your ethos as a yeah. school like why not do it really well yeah. you know how could you be teaching in the classroom that you know we need to reduce plastic and then you'd go into a secondary school and all you see is plastic bottles of water like it has to mirror for it to work it has yeah. to be joined yeah. so this is why henry says the whole 
school food approach. It's that the whole school needs to be on board and unified with yep. the mission of their school food. Yep, yep. Okay, so so how, if, if you had a, a head teacher or a deputy head or a supply teacher um, come to you and they could see there's some barriers in, in the current school setup, um, how, how would you... How would you advise them to start this process? Because you, you've had the hard knocks, as you very kindly um, intimated with, when, when you started at, uh, at your, your school. How, how would you advise uh, people who want to create this, this system change? How would you advise them to go about it, please? I would say to sign up to our school food charter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're very lucky. We work with amazing head teachers in lockdown. I mean, I... For my own sanity, I think if I wasn't around head teachers who were driving, you know, food parcels to people's houses, who were making flapjacks to put in hampers, who were washing pots and pans to make sure kids got fed, you know, these are the people that I think, you know, it's just amazing to be part of the community where it, food matters so much and head teachers make it so important. Uh, for head teachers who we don't work with, um, I would just say that to get in touch because it is, we never say it's not hard work. It is, but to have ownership of what you serve kids in your school, you know, to have ownership of the food education and to link that with the growing and with the kitchen. I think for any head teacher, I'm obviously now, you know, talking for head teachers. But, yep. you know, the benefits that they see the kids enjoying, they enjoy their lunches, they enjoy, you know, most schools now are growing stuff on the school premises. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's it's just, it just makes perfect sense, I think, in my opinion. Yep. But then again, yep. I set up the charity. I, 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 can I kind of throw, throw, throw a big one at you? Do you think that the kids that are under your scheme are happier in school than those that perhaps are not? I would like, I mean, I would like to think so. I think if not happier, I mean, we always, we always get asked the question, you know, how, how is um, concentration in the classrooms? Yeah. Like, how can we link it? We can. And at the moment, you know, we've got Michael Nielsen, who's Dr. Michael Nielsen, actually, who's doing a lot of research, you know, with regards to trying to prove that it is that children are happier, they are concentrating more. Yeah. Um, but just in general, I think, you know, if you walk into a school, I mean, sometimes I walk into a, a school and they say Nicole I'm really sorry about the smell it's lunch and then walking into a school that we work with and you know you just get this buzz of children buzzing around really you know like I used to get asked in the morning like what's for lunch you know straight away as I walked into the door and that's the kind of difference between a school that you know invests in school food and the, the children that they have yeah. or a school that doesn't you know give a sausage yeah yeah and, and and what collaboration uh, what what collaborations uh, could we through, through this broadcast uh, present to you that's going to help you and your team to accelerate the growth of what you do and accelerate the growth into uh, into more schools um, even, even faster what what collaborations are you potentially looking for to help you any collaborations I mean we collaborate suppliers we always we're we're very lucky we get cost uh, prices for all the you know we work with loads of suppliers that give us um, cost price because otherwise I guess we wouldn't be able to afford the high quality of food that we get yeah um, collaborations I mean any anyone that wants to collaborate with us um, yeah. funnily enough I just got an email this morning from a a sausage company that want to donate sausages and I, <laughs> I was, was like obviously um our campaign is all about give a sausage so it's perfect yeah. but uh, what, um, what, what, so, so Nicole, we're, we're going to come on, on to the sausage campaign in, in, in a moment because otherwise Kath, Kath K from Indigo 8 is going to tell me off again for, for, for not, not promoting it uh, with you just what, one question in on, on what whatsapp um it is it more cost effective um, to to deploy your scheme than in comparison of uh, to buy from from food service. So I suppose the question is: is it can can you get the cost to? A lot of schools have a a a, a set budget. Um, is it expensive to deploy your scheme, or, or is it there thereabouts? It's all about money. Well, it's all about money, and this is the good thing: is that when uh, the school is in charge of their own budget, then they can see exactly what they're spending money on. Okay. We always say that it, 
you know, it, it can cost the same. The difference is that you're investing in your workforce, you're paying them a decent salary, you're, you know, paying them the London living wage, which is one of our, you know, sometimes, yeah, it, it's so important to be valued and to be paid well. You know, sometimes you go into a school and someone working in the kitchen has three, four jobs. Obviously, you know, they're going to come in and not be excited about what's for lunch. So, yeah. you know, paying your workforce, training them, and also looking at the quality of the food you're serving. So even if it costs the school the same, the quality of the food yeah. the kids are getting, you know, the staff are getting training, they're getting invested in, they're getting good salaries. So it's sometimes, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to be making money out of school food, yeah. but you're putting the budget in the right places. Yeah, yeah. And, and Nicole, just go back to the... The, the beep 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 example of the of the food service company um, and and they've got a job to do and, and they're just looking at efficiencies and they've got so much profitability held up in their supply chain because it's all about uh, numbers do you think there's a way that we can influence those companies to do good as well um, to 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 provide uh, be better ingredients and to try and um, step away from the 15 kilos of them um, of, of brown custard um, and and educate them to 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 help uh, educate the, the, the schools that aren't part of the scheme. Is that another way to look at it? Or, or, or have you already looked to engage with those sort of companies? Um, so Naomi Duncan, our CEO, always says, like, it's it's not wrong to make profit. You know, it's just the amount of profit that you make from feeding kids powdered custard. So, yeah. you know, it's I think, you know, the problem isn't in the fact that you know, there's companies out there who want to supply schools. I think the problem lies in, in the fact that we're supplying schools ultra processed food when okay. we have a workforce that we could utilize in the kitchen. Okay. And that's, that. yeah, that is, I think, yeah. fundamentally where the problem lies. Yeah, and, and, and Nicole, I love this crossover of, you know, you've got that workforce that you can deploy to make um, uh, better food and the kids can assist. Um, as, as well, going back to your fantastic foraging example in, in, in Hackney, that, that's just that, that that's uh, that. No, that's and um, we always joke at, at Dayhurst. So we used to have a cookery. We used to have cookery lessons every day and the kids used to come into the kitchen. And then we realized and we'd have events like Dayhurst, uh, which is the first primary school I worked uh, in, would have um, an art event called Tag. So we realized if we planned the cookery lesson just before tag we could get the kids to prep their own <laughs> their own food for the event so we literally ended up you know having a, a workforce within uh, between the ages of seven and 12 where they had just mountains of produce that they were chopping away to feed their parents in the evening yeah, um, but you know then again it's the education side yeah. um you know it's understanding we do butchery which you know the kids you know, butchering a chicken and cooking yeah. it over fire. It was this, one of the fundamental lessons. That, this is a story. You know, that, this is a story that, that, that just doesn't stop keep. Doesn't stop giving. So, so to, hold on. You you've done butchery with the kids. Yep. Okay. So we get all the kids to butcher a chicken, and then we uh, we used to light a fire pit in the school uh, football ground, and uh, then the kids cook the chicken over fire. Wow. Oh, the memories alone, Nicole, from that. And to be, to be fair, so this is the, the seed for the Hackney School of yeah. Food. Um, we, in lockdown, we built a school of food, which is in Hackney, hence why it's called the Hackney School of Food. And it's just a dedicated space to get kids uh, doing cookery lessons, to get school uh, yeah. cooks to be excited about food. It's yeah. got an amazing garden. It's got a pizza oven. It's got a fire pit. You know, and understanding, you know, kids, the gardens are amazing. It grows a lot of produce, grows potatoes. At the moment, it, it, it produced, um, we were thinking, you know, it, it's actually enough potatoes to feed kids in school for a lunch. And this is from a small school in Hackney. Um, but kids are harvesting and then, you know, using it to cook on, in the same day. Yeah. Um, they've got chickens. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's all linked to, understanding that you know like us getting excited about food um is fundamentally i guess 
I always say, if you're a chef, it's only because you're passionate about food. It's not the salary, it's not the hours. You turn up and you do 16 hours a day, you know, because you're obsessed with food and it's sharing this obsession, yep. which I think is the way forward out of, you know, the crisis that we're in at the moment and just eating the wrong food all the time. So, um, so there's, a, there's a, that expression that sometimes is, is not uh, overly endorsed about never waste a crisis. Um, and if there's one thing that we found out on the, yeah. on the back of the, the, the pandemic, uh, collaboration is, is, uh, is key. And there will be some amazing positives that come out of the situation that everyone is in. And, and hopefully uh, one of those is going to be the acceleration of, of, of chefs and schools. And, and it's great that your CEO is, uh, is already talking upstream to those uh, food, food service companies because I, I know they'll they'll want to help and participate because they they don't they don't want to do ill by uh but by, by the kids but perhaps they just need some directed advice from the, the likes of yourself so that they can tailor their their model and and, and likewise to, to have the likes of um henry on, on board as, uh, as as your as your roving ambassador um and to use you ongoing as a, as a shining example as to what could be done and, and incorporate that into the national likes of the national uh, food, food strategy. But it are, are, there, are, are there any other blockers? Are, are, I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to open the floodgates for you so that um, mm -hmm. every every head um, in in the country hops onto the the chefs and school website and and and, and just looks to duplicate it because you can just see it's just just a no brainer. You can just see the good that it will do within 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 all schools. What what more do you need as a, as a group as an organisation to to accelerate your your growth to the benefit of all? I think just like you said, I mean, just the conversation, head teachers, any chefs out there who are wanting to, you know, feed kids well on a daily basis, they can get in touch as well. And to be fair, I think I now will put that as top ask is any chefs that are out there that want to um, sign up to chefs and schools. Um, yeah. As everybody knows, there's a shortage of chefs. Um, yeah. And once again, you know, it's kind of coming out of lockdown and realizing that, you know, there's, there's so much out there with regards to job opportunities that, you know, before we yeah. used to get about 20 CVs a day. Yeah. Um, and now, yeah, we're not we're not struggling, but it would be great if chefs got in touch. Okay, and also, isn't there another positive um, spin? I've, I've forgotten the name of the group, but there's a great group that organises um, speakers to to go into into schools. Um, and oh, I've forgotten his name. There's a there's a group. What tasted? No, 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 no. This is about um, um, generalist speakers, and um, there's a, a fantastic reporter that was on the BBC. He's now on ITV, and he got into journalism because a speaker came to his school to talk about journalism. Some 30 35 years ago and um he he got the bug and um um he went on on through and so there's this um charity that has um uh high, high level personalities of all walks of industry come to talk okay. to schools can't we get chefs to just to come into a school for a day and yes. um just cook in front of the front, front of the kids or just cook in the kitchen and and the, and the kids watch and <laughs> they can the kids can either give a thumbs up or, or thumbs down but there'll be um a great education uh, both way. A, a pal of mine runs a lovely um, hotel uh, restaurant in in Bury St Edmunds, and I'm hopefully seeing him later. And I'm, I'm going to see if I can get uh, his chef, who, who's amazing, um, to Paul, go to, to, come to, to your kids' school. School and and just and just because because it's again it's just and and um, and for all the people within that that kitchen team to be to be shown off within the school because I just we, we've got to get over that whole. Well, it's not them and us thing, but I I, I get what you're saying. But um, and the, the worst case scenarios, but they, they've got the, there's much a part of the educational system for the long term good of these kids as the as as the as the teachers are. So okay, so so um, if we can get more chefs coming to you because there's there's potentially a better lifestyle and more enjoyment to be had uh, being involved in the school than than um, in, in a fr frenetic um, uh, re restaurant. And, and also to get chefs just to just come in on a, on a, on a regular basis to school. I'm so, sure all the schools would, would happily do that, wouldn't they? No, definitely. And even little things like, you know, I think one of our first lessons was soda bread, you know, to understand how simple, you know, 20 minutes is all it takes you and you don't oh, have wow. to, you know, buy an ultra processed slice uh, yeah bread that we normally buy so things like this when chefs are engaging with you know the kids and the parents as well yeah. um bringing the parents into the school is also really important and getting them yeah. onto the journey as well 
Yeah, well, well, well done. And there's a whole bit there, but as you say, to bring the parent, parents in because you can have cooking evenings. I've just had a WhatsApp in. Um, Nicole, do the, do the kids, from what they learn at school, um, go home and cook for their parents? We, we would like to think so. I mean, that's the main aim, really, is that they go home and do the cooking themselves. Um, but yeah, the Hackney School of Food is doing such a good job with getting kids. I mean, I was doing a lesson. I was watching a lesson. I wasn't doing it. Um, a pizza lesson, you know, and it, it's amazing on how I think we underestimate how much kids learn yeah. and want to then replicate. I mean, knife skills, for example, we were always it was always frowned upon uh, just teaching kids how to hold a knife properly. But if you're not going to start at a young age, yeah. you know, then they're always going to be afraid of chopping. Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah, you, you and I don't know enough, know enough stories about kids age 12 not being able to use a pair of scissors because they've never been never been given a pair of scissors before. Um, yes, and, and, and we, we, we shouldn't be modelly cuddling them at that that young age on subjects like, like this because it's a life skill, isn't it? It is. And I think, you know, they say, you know, students go to university and they're not able to feed themselves. You know, they're eating from cans. So this is this is trying to change the fact that, you know, even something as simple as, I mean, Tom Kerridge did a poached egg in the kettle, which I I, um, I was quite, quite um, Excellent. excited about. I haven't tried it yet, but things like this, you know, just boiling peas and blitzing them and having pea soup, that uh, kind I, of thing is what so, we wanted so, to get. So, so Nicole, a question in. Is there a book in the call? Uh, is there a book? Yes, we are. We are releasing uh, "Feed Your Family" in February. No, so, so to tell us a little bit more about it, if you if you can do, if it's not if it's not press embargo, um, it's actually a collection of recipes. So it was written by Joe Weinberg and myself, and it was basically it, it's. I mean, obviously, it's a beautiful book, but it was to of collect course. the story. <laughs> To collect the stories and the journey of chefs and schools, you know, oh, there's wow. some great photos of, you know, all the chefs that we have in schools and their recipes, their recipes, the recipes that they create with the teams that uh, they get given. There's re recipes from our, um, a, a few of our trustees. There's uh, chefs like Anna Jones. Uh, Yotam has a recipe as well. So it, 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 it kind I've got, of... I've got an order. Where, where can they get the book? <laughs> uh, it will be released in February. Okay. Waterstones. Let's just go for Waterstones. Richard oh, and Julie. Amazon. Top, top I mean, 10 I think Amazon's Amazon. Always... <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's an amazing uh, array of recipes that kids That's brilliant. get given in schools. And the main reason why we wanted to do this book is we wanted to also, you know, show what's possible with school food, um, we have this uh, idea where we put sal sharing salads on the tables and the idea yeah. stemmed, you know, from wanting it to be educational, but also kids having autonomy over what they ate meant that they normally eat it. So if they've put something on their plate. So, you know, our main thing and our main thing in Excellent. the campaign as well is that we never oh. want any child to go hungry. Oh, so no, they never leave the dining hall if they yeah. haven't ate something. Okay. So the fact that we had these dips and crudités, uh, things that we do this thing called an edible garden, which is baby veg. Uh, we make a soil, which is with blitzed dehydrated olives. Um, and it's like they're picking these baby veg out of the soil and eating them. So things like this, you know, which get, get kids engaged, um, and also hopefully make sure that they don't leave the dining hall without having eaten anything. Fantastic. So to how do we how do we summarize this? So, so Nicole, you've got this fantastic uh, background, uh, chef background. You, you created this inspirational change of, of chef and schools. You got you got a you, you got a book coming out. Oh, here we go. Um, is there a film coming? Is there a Netflix <laughs> film? Is there gonna be a Netflix film? Uh, uh, I think our head of training, Yenny, is on on it on on trying to create a netflix chefs and schools film but i think a really nice way to wind up is always to say thank you um and it's thank you to everybody at chefs and schools to everyone who's believed in the project to all the chefs that turn up every day to cook these amazing meals you know thank you to people who support us um and get the message out so i always you know go back to thinking that 
you know, the support that we have is the reason why we're able to do what we do. And that's from everybody. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to Henry for sending that tweet eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just hope he, was, he, I hope he wasn't annoyed that we didn't want to interview him, but we just wanted to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the tv enough isn't he i think, I think what you you have done I, I just i think still think it's amazing that you took a, this this leap of faith into this unknown and, and created what you've done and you've got this amazing collection of, of people behind you um tell us about the sausage we we, we we mustn't forget about the sausage campaign otherwise kath is going to shoot me tell us about the sausage campaign so the give a sausage campaign is give uh, a sausage Give a sausage. Yeah. yeah. And it's basically so we're asking, um, yeah, the whole nation to join our lunchtime revolution. And that's to share the film and to, see, to show how they give a sausage about school food. So if you want to tweet us um, or get in touch with us, um, we're calling. I mean, like I said, if schools can sign up to our school food charter, that would be amazing. Um, and also, you know, government to take three actions. I mean, this is the most important thing is, you know, to put quality first, to invest in the workforce and to make sure that no child misses out. You know, this is yeah. the main reason why we set up the charity was to make sure that if we are gonna give a child one hot meal a day that most probably is the main meal, then it's our duty of care to make sure that that meal is the best meal that we could provide, you know, with the resources that we have. Yeah. So that is the Give a Sausage campaign. <laughs> Excellent. I will, I will link it on all, all the links when this uh, re record goes goes out. N Nicole, you've, you've been fantastic. What's Max, your favourite you fresh... Thank you for your interest. What, what's your favourite fresh produce? Favourite fresh produce? Um, I, at the moment, broccoli. Oh, broccoli. Um, I'm going into schools and getting kids to taste broccoli. And I was in a school on Monday and... There was this little boy and he was like, I just don't like veg. And I was like, well, after this lesson, you're going to like veg. And then he stayed afterwards, like standing, waiting for me. And he was like, I still don't like veg and I don't like broccoli. But yeah, it's um, all part of the job. It's um, but yeah, I mean, fresh produce, you can't you can't not have fresh produce in scores. Yeah, no, I just, it is, it is an amazing sector. I think with all of us combined to give you, you, yourself and the team at Chefs and Schools a, a, a real push up the road, you, you're going to create even more success and, and, and change our nation for the good. Nicole, thank you very much for your time and we wish you all the best for the, for, for the future. And we'll, we'll, we'll push the, uh, we, we, all, we all give a sausage. Give a sausage. That's all we're asking, people to give a sausage. <laughs> Nicole, thank bye. you very much. You be well. Bye, 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 bye.